The global auto market is facing a major reset for the first time in over a decade. Coming on the heels of record-setting profits during the chip shortage and global supply chain issues, automakers are now facing financial hardship, growing inventories, and quality control issues that are plaguing their bottom lines. Just recently, we've seen automakers have significant layoffs, Volkswagen in Germany executing their first layoff in decades, and here in the United States, many automakers have shut down production plants or tapered back expectations for vehicles to be built. What's happening with Volkswagen in Germany is making it seem that the auto market reset is not just here in the United States. We've been tracking Jeep, Ram, Chrysler, and Dodge for months now, all US brands that have been struggling mightily. But this news out of Volkswagen is showing us that the issues are uh, issues faced by the auto industry are happening globally. For the first time in the company's history, Volkswagen is shutting down three factories permanently, introducing pay cuts for existing staff, and downsizing existing plants that they want to keep online. There are more than 300,000 employees of Volkswagen in Germany. It's one of the largest companies in the country. And the fact that the federal government there hasn't stepped in to you know, mediate this downturn is really surprising. And it also demonstrates how severe the economic impact is for these automakers. All of these automakers, Volkswagen included, have bet big on electric vehicles. And unfortunately, even as EV market share has gone up, it hasn't increased enough to offset all of the investments that these companies have made into producing electric vehicles. In addition to the three factories being shut down, Volkswagen is introducing a two-year-long wage freeze, which they expect should help them save billions of dollars. There's another automaker that's also struggling, this time in the United States, Ford. Ford loses billions of dollars each year on their electric vehicle program, and unfortunately, dealers are struggling to sell those vehicles as well. Ford is facing similar challenges to Volkswagen. They went all in on electric vehicles, and unfortunately, there just isn't the demand there to justify all the investment and all of the production. Similarly to Volkswagen, Ford has had to make changes to their strategy here in the United States. We've seen significant incentive spending from Ford to try and move 2023 and 2024 aged electric vehicle inventory, and we haven't seen any major layoffs from Ford here in the United States yet, but the time might be coming. Ford has introduced a multi tens of thousands of dollar incentive for their dealers if they purchase more F-150 Lightning vehicles from their dealer bank. This is a sign of how desperate Ford is becoming to simply move the EV vehicles off of their books and put it onto their dealers. Now, at the same time, Ford is also struggling with major quality control issues here in the United States. Just in Q2 of 2024 alone, warranty expenses rose by almost $1 billion. Ford spends almost 5% of their sales on just warranty costs. Like, think about that for a second. Their quality control issues are so bad, which they lead the league in recalls. At least they've led the league in recalls for the past three years. They're currently tied with Stellantis for first place with the most recalls in 2024. They spend 1 20th of the revenue they bring in on recalls. Like that's, that's unfathomable. So as we look at a market that's having a major reset, the automotive industry is having a major reset. You can see that Ford and Volkswagen both are demonstrating a lot of traits that show why things are so challenging. They've produced these really expensive electric vehicles that no one wants. And in Ford's case, the quality has been pretty bad ever since the chip shortage. And so what's going to happen? You have to spend a bunch of money on incentives and, uh, you know, try and convince people to purchase your vehicles. And you also have to cut costs significantly. And that's obviously what we're seeing Volkswagen do. Pops, there's a major issue out there. There are all sorts of people brokering your data and anyone can buy it, whether it's your social security number, your home address, what school you went to, all that information and so much more is being sold online to marketers and scammers. That's bad. Absolutely. And the way to prevent that is to use Delete Me. Delete Me will help take your information away from all those brokers so that they can't sell it to the scammers out there. Look at you, Pops. You sound like a Delete Me user yourself. I know I use Delete Me and hundreds of my records have been scraped off of the internet, getting that information out of the hands of those scammers, marketers, and everything in between. We have a special offer for our Car Edge community, 20% off when you sign up with the link joindeleteme.com slash car edge. Top of the description will be that link, Dad. We both use Delete Me. We enjoy using Delete Me. I like the monthly reports that show me all my data being removed from the internet. We thank Delete Me for sponsoring our channel. One day, you might not even see me here. <laughs> We've got a German automaker in Volkswagen, a US automaker in Ford. What about a Japanese automaker? Well, Nissan is struggling mightily. In their latest quarterly results, they reported a 99% decline in net income. They, they had 99% less profit year over year 
because they had to spend so much money trying to incentivize the purchase of their vehicles. Now, Nissan's interesting. They also have quality control issues. Their brand has been tainted ever since they had CVT transmission challenges many years ago, but Nissan hasn't gone all in on electric vehicles and their price point is actually fairly reasonable relative to their peers. While the Nissan Aria, their lone EV, has not sold particularly well, it's just one of the, you know, one of many within their lineup of internal combustion engine vehicles, and they are relatively cheap. Nissans are still relatively cheap. So it is interesting to see Nissan's profits decline so much and them struggle as much as they are because they do offer an affordable alternative to all the expensive electric vehicles being produced by the Volkswagens, the Fords, and, and now obviously these other brands as well. We've got Volkswagen, we've got Ford, we've got Nissan, and then yes, we have to touch on Stellantis. Stellantis is the parent company of Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, and Ram. They also own Alfa Romeo and Fiat and Maserati, brands that are certainly not performing well. In Stellantis' case, profits were down 48% year over year, which is also obviously really freaking bad. And Stellantis has the greatest oversupply of inventory. Their dealers are literally begging the automaker to stop producing vehicles because they can't take, they, they physically cannot fit any more trucks on their lots. Things have gotten so bad at Stellantis that you actually had the dealer body up in arms and publicly disparage the CEO of the company saying that he needs to be replaced and that the their brand strategy is completely wrong. And quality control issues plague Stellantis as well. They're tied with Ford for this year in terms of the number of recalls. All of this news from these four brands comes on the heels of incredible record-setting profits during the chip shortage and global supply chain issues. Many of the vehicles that you can today get for thousands of dollars below MSRP were selling with additional dealer markups just 24 months ago. And automakers were making money hand over fist as their dealers couldn't get enough cars to, to satisfy demand. In such a short period of time, we've seen the entire auto market reset entirely. And it's not just these brands. It's happening across the board with pretty much everyone except for Toyota and Honda. One aspect of that is the all-in push towards electric vehicles. The brands who are still satisfying customer demand and generally performing well are the brands that did not go all in on EVs. Look at Toyota's lineup, look at Honda's lineup. It's not all about the electric vehicles. Let's look at Stellantis for a second. You might be saying to yourself, well, Stellantis doesn't have a lot of EVs. But coming in early 2025 are two brand new Ram pickup trucks. And guess what? Both are electric vehicles. This automaker has been investing all of their time, energy, and effort to try and catch this new fad. And ultimately, it's going to bite them in the butt. Ford even split their business into two so that they could focus more on EVs and more direct to consumer sales. And obviously that hasn't panned out well either. And what's going on at Volkswagen is very clear. They are struggling mightily because their Volkswagen ID4 push just hasn't worked out. There's also the greed factor in all this. During the chip shortage and global pandemic, we saw automakers make more money than ever before. And we saw dealer profitability go through the roof. Automakers enabled this by not producing enough vehicles to meet customer demand. And ultimately we've seen new car prices and used car prices go through the roof over the past 20 24 to 36 months. In many cases, automakers have priced their customers out of the market. And today we know that when a customer comes back to the dealership to buy that new car, if they have a trade-in, they're typically upside down by more than $6,500. One out of every five customer who goes to trade in their vehicle to buy a new one is upside down on their auto loan by more than $10,000. These automakers and these dealers screwed a lot of customers over the past few years, and now those repeat customers, those would-be customers, are looking at a huge negative equity amount, and they just can't make up the difference. So this global reset in the automotive industry is partly because of a strategy that was all in on EVs, and it's also partly because of greed. The, the price of a new car just got too doggone high, and now these customers who want to go buy a new vehicle, who would be interested in buying a new vehicle, they simply can't afford it. They can't afford it, and also banks won't approve them for a loan when they try and bring $10,000 of negative equity to the table. Oh, and add on to all this the fact that vehicle quality has gotten worse and not better, and you start to see why new car sales globally are not increasing at the rate that you would anticipate. New car sales here in the United States have been stagnant for a long time, even as population growth has increased. What's happening over in Europe, what's happening in Japan, and what's happening here domestically in the United States paints a pretty scary picture for the future of the auto industry. We have companies like Tesla coming up with robo taxis that are going to drive people around. And you have companies like Waymo that are trying to you know, drive people in autonomous Jaguars. How much longer will we be dependent on new cars to get from point A to point B? It's really not clear. But so long as these automakers keep pushing electric vehicles and so long as they keep jacking up their average transaction prices, one thing is very certain. We're gonna see a lot of stock prices go down, not up. And we're gonna see a lot of customers who might have been interested in buying a new vehicle simply wait on the sidelines. What do you think the future holds for this industry? Do you think that these stories from these four companies paint the picture of a time of reckoning or do you think things will get better? And as always, if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe. We're here to help as much as we can back at caredge.com.